Chamber of Commerce isn't <laughs> coming after me. That's it. <laughs> oh, we are live. We're live. We're live. We're good. Welcome back. 25. Last show. 25. It doesn't seem like it was a long time because we just posted Alan's show, but uh, which was a great show. If you haven't watched that, that show, it was good. entertaining. I rewatched it because it was fun to fun to watch. But thank you guys uh, for hopping on episode 25. 25. Uh, with, uh, with Mitch and I here. And uh, the home first, team. the home team, as they say, right? The uh, We have, first off, happy holidays. I hope you had a great Christmas, New Year's, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. Whatever you celebrate because this is our first time back since, um, since before the holidays. And uh, But also, Noah, behind the camera, is full-time now. Graduated. Graduate. Graduate of Valparaiso University. Congratulations. Yeah. Clap. Yeah. I'm not clapping. Golf clap. I'm just kidding. Golf clap. Congratulations, job, brother. And welcome. He is now full time with us. Uh, and we got new angles here. We got we new got shots. Two cameras. I just can't. I'm locked eyes. I can't not look. You got your it. own cam. I got my own cam. Where's my camera? Right there. Right. <laughs> Boom. Where's right. my angle? All right. <laughs> so, new setup, right? Uh, Noah full time. Congratulations, bro. And welcome. Uh, full time. It's gonna be a big change for you in the business world. Are you excited? Very. Yeah. Very. Clutching my fists right now. And it's you gotta so watch out. Awesome. You gotta watch out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Any mess ups, you're gone. Yeah. Okay. All right. Different Every expectations <laughs> now. Uh, so we got a series of stories to touch on. It's gonna be more of a uh, news update at the end, uh, just like local stuff going on in the region. Kind of a uh, more more traditional show for us, no guest or nothing. But we're gonna talk about some stuff going on, um, including a couple new restaurants that opened up. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, let's see the what used to be the old Crown Point Fun Center and what that's been transformed into now. Uh, Talk about the a previously controversial topic of the um, uh, the plan or development that was supposed to be uh, that is going to be a rental uh, single family rental development in Crown Point, which is the first of its kind. It's um, polarizing, polarizing for sure. Uh, we're, and then we'll talk a little bit about the market, and then uh, also a legend in the UFC sports uh, in, or in the UFC. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, remembering a little bit of a legend, old Stefan Bonner. But uh, first thing we're going to talk about. First off, start with a lay up here uh just really introducing two new uh restaurants so first one being the opening of culinary misfits right here on the square uh this is uh, a cool new restaurant have you eaten there yet i have not i mean i heard it's tough to get a table there right so now. i've tried about six times wow and each time it's been an hour minimum but i know they're still waiting on furniture so okay. they're not full like capacity yet but from everybody that i have talked to so culinary misfits opened uh dining they're calling it a dining experience right uh super cool spot what's yeah. cool even if you look at the menu it's like the reason it's called culinary misfits is because there's like whole different types of food it's not like just italian or just american or just a, and also like the menu items names are freaking hilarious right yeah. like the like the appetizers is called foreplay Love come it. on man you Love know it. right so no what do you think you learned about this in college yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Get the man and get the man into misfits. Uh, but I mean, the building is incredible. Uh, they did an unbelievable job. I'm grateful to know uh, the owners uh, and putting it together. And they're, I mean, they just crushed it. They the, don't miss, dude. Yeah, the inside is awesome. It's, it's the um, uh, same owners of Square Roots, or at least some of them. I don't know all the details on that, but but I know that some people involved in Square Roots were involved there. And obviously, Square Roots has been a staple here. But Culinary Misfits is open. Definitely go support their new business. Um, they've done a phenomenal job. Their menu's cool. The vibe is incredible. The renovation of that building is insane. Talk about best and highest use, man. I mean, yeah. that's they crushed it over there. Yeah, I don't know if we pointed out it's right on the south end of the square. Thank you. Um, it's it. I haven't ate there, but from what I've seen and knowing their previous uh, establishments, it's going to be a, a good ad. Yeah. Good and it's, value ad. It's a 250 seat restaurant. It's huge. Three levels, like 250 seat restaurant. Um, they have a 50 seat party room on the upper floor. It can be rented out for wedding receptions, parties, corporate events, private nice. events, things like that. Um, so, yeah, it looks like Chef Aaron Horde and uh, sous chef Kurt Doubt. Doubt, I believe, doubt you say it, came up with the menu, uh, include Detroit style pizzas, sandwiches, salads, classic smash burger, uh, best cluck and chicken sandwich. Mm. Look at that, dude. Come on. You hear the name? That's just hilarious. Like best cluck. I'll take the best cluck and chicken you got, you know? One cluck 
one one o'clock in <laughs> for instance tops chicken breast with pepper jam mm, shredded mm-hmm. lettuce and a sweet spicy pickle they have some cool names at uh score roots too they do like they the do. texas ranger tacos yeah that's a good one that's cool you know who else has funny names too is tavern Tavern yeah. does a good job with that. Shout out to Tavern. Sleeper spot on the square, dude. But We're here for the good names. Comment your favorite good name of a food item at your local eatery. I just cool. love That's a good one. I just love it because, like, it's it's cool, man. Yeah. Like, it's like funny. I want to look at something. Mother Clucker. I know that that's one. That's a good one. That's a good that's one. That's a good one. But it kind of opened, like, out of nowhere. It felt like. Because mm-hmm. the outside, you know, the outside was being worked on, and then all of a sudden the sign went up, and they're like, yeah, Boom. we're opening tomorrow. They must have been crushing construction. Wh- yeah, yeah, it must have. Like, they, but it's so nice in there. So go support local business owners, local people in the area who invested a lot into the community to put an amazing new restaurant in the area. And then uh, anything else on that one? No, I was just going to say, on the on the cool names, Ricochet Taco is always good for that. Too. Ricochet solid with that, too. Always good. Dude, I, there's... Yeah, there's some creative juices flowing around. On the square, something man. in the water. I can feel yeah, it. Square, yeah. Down in my plums. Uh, <laughs> let's go. Here we go. So we got uh, Lou. Uh, Lou Malnati. Oh yeah, right? Lou Malnati's yeah. right. Lou Malnati's opening Crown Point. I believe they're starting only in. Uh, if you guys are Chicago-based pizza, Lou Malnati's obviously a big one. Uh, they've got. I believe they have one at Cherry It's only pickup only. Yeah. Uh, and same, same thing here. Thing. It's going to be pickup only for a while. But they took. It looks like they took that whole building. So I feel like on Broadway, at least based on where the sign's at, sign's in the center, not sure if they're going to take the whole thing or not, but it looks to me like they are just based on where the sign is and uh, the setup of that building. But for now, pick up. So if you guys are Lumal Nadi's people, Lumal Nadi's is open. Um, no, I ain't got much on that. No, that is, go get some pizza. You good know what I'm highlight saying? there. Um, all right. Let's touch on the former Crown Point Fun Center, right, which is now the hub. The hub. So former Crown Point Family Fun Center uh, becoming a sports complex. Uh, pretty cool what they did here, uh, and in my opinion, Crown Point, we've got, and we'll talk a little bit more on this in a minute. But Crown Point, obviously, I think is known for a lot of its sports yeah. uh, facilities. Youth yeah, options. for sure. Like when I was a kid, and we played junior bulldogs, we literally played in like straw and mud fields. And now these kids have like two turf fields to practice on. It's yeah. like, I mean, it's insane. The, uh, but this is this is awesome. So. Um, once known for mini golf, uh, mini golf and go-karts, former Crown Point Fun Center is being transformed to a sports complex uh, on Maribel Road, where the, uh, obviously the old Fun Center was. In fall of 2021, Great Lakes Hub began to renovate the space. Um, owned by former pro baseball player, uh, player Bobby Morris, Great Lakes Sports Hub runs different sporting camps and training sessions, largely focused on baseball and softball, uh, which I had the massive benefit of going through Crown Point's baseball program my entire life. It was single-handedly one of the greatest experiences of my life. So to have another, and I will touch more on the Crown Point baseball program and how this, I'm sure, is going to support that. Um, for those, some of you may know that one of my best friends is Zach Plezak, who's a professional baseball player who went A to Z from this program. Uh, got to see him last week, actually. I mean, you're like, there's so many people who've benefited from this program. So, uh, but to have something else like this, Bobby Morris is bringing the hub. Uh, eight and a half acre site. Looks like they redid the parking lot. They're uh, they're going to be taking out the the old mini golf course and go-kart course fixing up uh and they're going to add on to the existing building which we'll share a rendering for you guys here that was approved by the city uh plan commission unanimously approved uh, unanimous, unanimously approved the site plan and the building looks super cool um so we'll share that with you guys uh but Looks like uh, they're going to be turning the outdoor space. So they're going to keep the 33,000 square foot dome for indoor work. And then the outdoor space, they're looking to add things uh, like uh, practice field, volleyball courts, and a space for wiffle ball, which is sick because I played a lot of wiffle ball, ungodly amounts of wiffle ball <laughs> growing up. So if I can go play some grown up wiffle ball, dude, I'm pumped. So regardless, I actually think I know someone who's involved in the ownership of this, and I would love to talk with her. Um, uh, but super cool. Uh, new development that's going on here but uh, what are your thoughts on it Mitch? I think that it just is like super on brand for Crown Point in the region as a whole when I talk to people that don't live in the region never grew up here and don't know a whole lot about the region that's like kind of what they're drawn to is like things for their kids to do programs for their kids right. and just like youth sports I mean when we had Mary Uran on he talked about how under his leadership they really leaned into that I think that this is a great option for kids parents and just it'll make the region better as a whole the region's kind of known for putting out quality athletes time and time again like we pretty much hold it down so yeah um at least in my world in the wrestling space we really hold it down so uh it's it's awesome to see just the youth sports having uh, 
I guess, just like good opportunities for kids. Mm Mm-hmm. 100%. And when you look at like, you know, this year, Crown Point uh, football team was undefeated, unfortunately, with a heartbreaking, look at that snow. Uh, I know. Beautiful. It stopped me in my tracks. I had to quit talking Mother Nature. You you stopped looking at your own camera? I I lost my camera and I was locked into Mother Nature Uh, for a minute. But Crown Point had an undefeated football season, right, which we haven't seen in years. But to see the football season, football team doing well, and I believe uh, our Ladies, women's basketball team won state a couple years ago, and like wrestling is obviously always sought. Like to see these additions to it's bringing again more better quality people, families, children, athletes to the area. Um, I mean, the the thing is, is like, what else were they going to do with that space, right? When when the fun yeah. center went down, someone was. Gonna, I mean, if it would take a lot of a lot of balls to come back in and say, I'm going to reopen the same thing. Yeah. Right, because if it didn't work before, you know, it's going to be tough if it, you know, to, or maybe maybe it, that it wasn't that it didn't work maybe that wasn't the problem they were there for a long time right so i don't know the details of that but it didn't seem like it was the most successful of a business as it could have been you know which is crazy because crown point needs something like the family fun totally. center right yeah. like mini putt arcade stuff to do um you know I, it was it was interesting to me that it didn't seem like it was crazy busy all the time so but to take that over and for the use of that property i think it's a great use of that property turn it into something that is going to be used and utilized uh, obviously sports and what what kids what may you talk about on the show talked about people want to invest into their kids and this is a great investment into our kids and youth programs and if they're focused on baseball and softball like i, I shared a little bit ago my experience with soft with the the baseball program a to z coach strayer and the program that he has at crown point high school for baseball is unbelievable um it is a program where if you have any thoughts of your kids playing baseball, and I, I couldn't possibly recommend it any more high, highly. The the coaches that we learned from, the amount of fun that we had, it was one of those teams where we won and we had, we we had so much fun because the leadership was so good at bringing the best out of the athletes and out of the students. Man, it was it was such a good program. I couldn't recommend it any more highly. And you can see a lot of the very successful people who've come out, not just in baseball but outside of that. I've got a lot of friends that I'm working with who are, went through the baseball program, who the values and principles they learned through baseball and what Coach Strayer and his his uh, his team of coaches taught. I know so many guys who are from that program that are very successful in their lives now as business people or in their work, in their jobs or as as uh, husbands and fathers, as you know, being in the baseball program. So highly recommend it. If you got anybody looking, this seems like a great addition to send, you know, a great place to train, having the indoor space, getting into the, the, the field house at the high school is difficult with how much, you know, so having some more space outdoor or indoor training and then also outdoor. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, so, I think it's super awesome, cool. Man. Heck yeah. Things. Sweet. All right, um, let's move on to the rental story. Uh, Crown Point Plan Commission approves rental home development. Canvas at Crown Point. The project received primary plat approval during, this is an NWI Times story, during a Monday night plan commission meeting. This story was just a couple days ago, January 12th. So on Monday night this week, 176-unit single-family rental development on the southeast side of 125th Avenue in Delaware. All right, so over by I-65 and uh, where uh, Hamilton Square area is. Uh, Residents and city leaders leaders have expressed concerns about the project during multiple meetings on Monday. Um, They said it's one of the hardest developments. Daniel Haley, um, great, great guy. Uh, Shout out to Dan. Share that this is one of the hardest developments that they've struggled with, and he's been doing it a very long time. Um, In May, they approved the the rezoning, right, of the 50 acres, turned it all into residential. Uh, John Vandevoort. So we'll call him uh, JVDV, JVDV, John Vanderboard, uh, director of Watermark Properties, which Watermark is the developer of this, uh, said Canvas will feature six different models ranging from 1,000 to 2,300 square foot. They'll handle all the property maintenance and center the development around community amenities. So this is a rental place. They said that their average rent is going to be roughly $3,000 a month for a rental property. Uh, obviously, there are going to be brand new construction, single family homes, nice homes. Um, and their average income of watermark residents across the country is one hundred seventy six, <clears throat> excuse me, thousand dollars, one hundred seventy six thousand two hundred dollars. So, uh, watermark currently has properties in Colorado, Texas, Tennessee, near Chicago, and the Twin City areas of Minnesota. All nice areas, mostly suburban areas of uh, nicer places across the country. Um, let's see. The cater to young families, saving up for a down payment. Empty nesters or professionals who frequently ro- relocate for work. 
they want to be a part of this community, uh, JDVD said. Uh, wait, JVDV. There it is. Uh, John said. I'll, I'll stop that. I think there's a tremendous opportunity bringing people here to this community to support Franciscan and their 19,000 employees in a 20-mile radius. Right. So they're looking to get some of those people who relocate for to work for Franciscan doctors or physicians or travel nurses or these types of people who may be here for a short period of time. They're looking to take advantage of that who people who aren't going to buy here because the truth of the matter is there's not really nice places to rent in Crown Point no. and then you're going to work in Crown Point. So this this kind of fills that void. Uh, they said they've done it before. They don't really. Um, uh, let's see. OK, that was this. Oh, uh, they they highlighted in the article. They said a four letter word, which that four letter word is rent. Right. Canvas residents have undergone, they undergo a background check, sign highly restrictive leases, um, and they likely, oh, uh, Hallmark, or excuse me, Watermark will likely spend about 20000 a month maintaining the property. Um, but the commission was afraid if they sell the property, they're fearful if they sell the property, what happens? They, they know that Watermark has the right idea and they're going to take care of the place, but what if they sell it? And Watermark said that that's not their plan. Um, their plan is to keep it. If it ever did, if they ever did sell, those terms and conditions of whoever the owner is would stay the exact same. Um, some of the express the, the vote passed five to two, um, and and uh, some of the ex, one of the quotes actually came from one of the commissioners saying they don't see three to four thousand a month in rent. Uh, they it's not going to happen, and before you know it, this will be section eight, which is a very strong statement to make. Uh, John said there's a severe lack of housing in Crown Point. Um, and he said, these people are going to pay rent. He goes, rent is a four letter word. I don't know why anybody in here, I don't know anybody in here who's never rented in their life. And all of a sudden rent is section eight housing. That's what John said. $3,000 a month and the qualifications that we have for our residents ensures the community stays the way it's intended to stay. Thoughts? Uh, kind of frustrated with uh, the, the comment about, you know, that this is going to be section eight in a short period of time. That, that's a little bit frustrating. Um, it's such a that is such a uh, a bold and co like and just crazy statement. Yeah, kind of insulting to a group of people, and and it, it's it's just kind of rude. Um, I think that this is a good development. I think this is good for Crown Point. I think this is good for the region. I think that there are a lot of large employers that there's positions within those companies that require. People come here for a quarter, come here for two quarters. It doesn't make sense to buy a house when you're coming somewhere for 60 to 90, maybe 120 days. Uh, but it does make sense to make sense to rent a quality place, uh, especially the, they said the average income was like 170 grand for a household that lives in their developments. If you're making that kind of money, just do this experiment for a second. Go on Zillow. Put yourself in the headspace that you're going to move to the region for 60 days for work and you make 175 grand. Look at what's out there. Look at what options you have to rent. And all those options probably are targeting like one year lease. So think about that. There's not a lot of options to rent for 60 to 90 days in the region, uh, especially on such a, a short lease term. Sure. Would you agree with that? Yeah, 100%. And outside of the work, outside of the transient people who are in short 30, 60, 90 days, the, a lot of those a lot of those people who, even if they are coming for work, they may have a three-year residency. Yeah. Like, let's not forget that the University of Chicago is coming here, right? So how many, how many jobs are going to be created for the University of Chicago that they may have a residency as a doctor or as a physician's assistant or, or a nurse practitioner? Like, those, those people need places to live. And, and if you look at places to rent in Crown Point, some of these people don't want to make that decision to buy something, which is understandably so, right? Uh, if that's the case, if you look at, and like you said, Google search places for rent Crown Point, Indiana, okay? Search, see what you find. And <clears throat> it's very, very difficult to find a good place to rent in this area. And the truth of the matter is, is quality places that grow need quality places to rent for quality people to live. It's just how it goes. It's just part of the process. Mm -hmm. There's also people who are going to come from parts of Illinois and Chicago who want to see if this is where they want to live. If someone can afford 3000 a month. So I personally have the experience of screening tenants for rental properties. Okay. For my own properties. I've done this. You can screen people and prof these people are professionals. Watermark is professionals. Like they're, it's background checks. It's screening. It's credit reports. It's credit history. The it is deal. very, very detailed. It's, it's the odds of something that is this quality and this nice single family properties going down and not 
happening. I can't tell you how many people we talk to who actually do look for $2,500 to $3,500 a month rentals, whether it's an unfortunate divorce, whether it's a, and someone needs a nice place and they don't want to live in a, an apartment building, or again, the people working for the Franciscans, the University of Chicago's in the world, and all these other medical spaces that are here for residencies, temporary people moving from out, out sort of different areas who want to see if this is where they would want to live. If someone's going to li live in a single family home and spend that type of money, they're going to obviously should more than likely take care of it, right? But at the same time, the community's taking care of it. It's going to have nice amenities, a lot of money. Um, what is the worst case scenario? Okay, the worst case scenario is this development starts to go down, okay? If that happens, the best in the best interest then of the developer would be to sell these properties for sale, right? Is I mean, that's honestly the worst case scenario. It would be this isn't getting the income that they expected, and they're not able to make the money that they can, so they can't support the debts that go into building this place and putting it together, which I don't foresee happening. It's 176 units. It's not. We're not talking about thousands of units. Yeah. So it's 176 houses. The worst case scenario is these things go for sale, and then Crown Point's exactly how it is today, right? Yeah. So and they're 400, 500 thousand dollar houses plus. So I mean, I, again, it, there's a niche for it. Someone who, if a company like Watermark who's building in Texas, Tennessee. Right. These areas that are booming and they're like, we want to be in Crown Point, Indiana. They see something more. This is their job is to know demographics, to know like how people are like how, how people are moving progress. in transit. Exactly. Yeah. There's a crap ton of research that goes into building 176 properties. And I'm just going to say an average of 400,000, 176 properties times 400,000. And that's probably low, to be honest with you. That's 70 million dollars. Plus, we're not even talking, we're just talking about construction of building houses. We're not even talking about infrastructure, which is one of the most expensive parts. So these people are going to put hundreds of millions of dollars into this community. Do you think they're not doing the research to see that the need is there? Yeah. By the way, there's University of Chicago has 66 acres on 109th and 65. How big is that going to be? How many employees are going to be there? And they're pointing yeah. out Franciscan with 20,000 building another brand new place. I, I can guarantee you half of those people are going to be physicians and doctors in there. Like it just, it, there, there's so much, there's so much uh, healthcare in this community that, and more healthcare coming that I can almost guarantee you that 90 of those 176 are going to be people that are in a freaking medical field. Like, and they're going to be here for two or three years on a residency. Yeah. So anyway, things that that's my thought. I don't think it's going to be a section eight. Uh, <clears throat> if it's, if, if the apartment buildings on Indiana Avenue and the apartment buildings on uh, on different in different parts of town here are not Section 8, right, and and they still have great tenants, a single-family de rental development with four or $500,000 homes that's beautiful with a bunch of amenities is not going to be Section 8, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, And I respect the concern we have to protect our, the community right, from any bad developments. We have to look at it from that perspective. But right now, I just don't see it with the demand of people who want to come here. Totally. And I, I was going to say, like, you know, worst case scenario, like you said, if they just have to package these things off and, and sell them one at a time or, you know, whatever they have to do to offload them, like they're they're building a high quality asset in, in this community that they're going to be able to sell, you know, like if they're going to ask three grand a month on average for these things, those have to be pretty nice finishes. You know, people aren't going to rent, uh, you know, piece of junk house. They're going to be nice. For, they're going to be nice. Yeah. So if you're worried about, you know, if these things do need to go to sale, then how's that going to affect my property value? Number one, it may not even be a comparable sales for your property. Number two, it's probably going to be a pretty high level, uh, development and if these things were packaged and and built to sell we wouldn't even be having this conversation yeah. it's just the rent piece that's throwing people off because people don't think of a renter as somebody who can afford a three thousand dollar a month payment until i started screening tenants i might have thought that same way yeah but you'll be shocked you'll be shocked you would be people. shocked how many people can afford that yes. and want to rent and and just because you don't rent doesn't mean that that's that's what's best for somebody else exactly I, like the tent I can't believe some of the tenants that I have. They have make such good money, but it's the decision Phenomenal. they want at this time, and that's it. That's how it goes. Phenomenal so. earners, great credit, and mm -hmm. and what it is is it's the X factor. It's the thing that you can't put on paper that that makes them want to rent. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be an emotional time. It may be a situation where, they're, like you said, they're going through a divorce or they're new to the area and they don't want to buy because they don't know what neighborhood they want to live in, what school they want their kid to be in. You know, they don't know what restaurants they like to frequent so mm -hmm. they're not going to buy a house and then six months later be like oh man i wish we would have bought one on this side of town or this area you know so mm -hmm. 
there's so many things that you you can't put on a chart or a graph that go into these decisions and i think it's going to be a great development sweet all right that's what we got um I, uh, I I understand. I do understand, though, the commission's concern with approving something like this because it is so different. It's different. It's different than what we're used to. But Crown Point is different than what it used to be, right? Northwest Indiana is different than what it used to be, yeah. and it just is what it is. I mean, that's it's a great dev- if you're going to ask for rental properties to come through, this is probably the best thing you could have ever asked for for rental properties to come through, and not a bunch of you know not a bunch of big apartment buildings. This yeah. is literally single family homes that are high end. Uh, high end for rentals. So, I mean, yeah, I think that if you're like, hey, we have to have new rentals in the area, this is probably the best thing that you could ever ask for. Totally. And so. another thing is if you don't want a bunch of rentals to pop up around the area and you're a homeowner in Crown Point, this is the best for you because they're all going to be in one location, you know, on one side of town. Like it's not going to be your neighbor's house that goes up for sale and a mom and pop investor that doesn't know how to manage it correctly, buys it, gets a tenant in there, and then, it, you know, goes to crap. Boom. It's not going to be that situation. Nope. It's handled by professionals away from your home. Let's move on. Last story is going to be the uh, December inflation report CPI uh, for uh, inflation. And uh, the most recent uh, report came out and just came out in uh, this week. And the Federal Reserve talked about what's going on. And basically, it was what we expected. It was decent news, which is that inflation is still cooling down, which is good. Uh, consumer price index climbed 6.5% uh, as uh, in the year through last month, down from 7.1% uh, in the November reading, which is good. Uh, the uh, the Federal Reserve talked about how 75 basis point uh, rate hikes are going to be – are definitely – past us um and uh, the day it says they said the days of raising them 75 basis points at a time are surely past patrick harker said president of federal reserve bank of philadelphia um and it looks like uh some people uh or excuse me it looks like things people are optimistic the markets respond optimistically to this and so obviously this is our world from the real estate side mortgage rates right how does that affect uh mortgage rates right now so let's mortgage rates okay about a month let's see how long ago not very long ago. Let's see exactly where we're at. And okay, in, uh, October seventeenth. So in October of twenty twenty two, rates peaked at for a thirty year fixed rate. You were at seven and a quarter, seven point two four percent. Okay, today, right now, Noah, you probably don't know this, so I'm going to ask you, Noah, what do you think interest rates are right now today? Six point zero seven, so almost six percent. So they're down almost one and a quarter percent in a thirty-year fixed mortgage. So, what is this? This is good news, okay. And the other side of that is the fact that there's more to look at than this than just where rates are at. And, and but the fact that that inflation is slowing down is great news. So that being the case, Mitch, do you have any thoughts? Initial thoughts on this? Yeah, related I, to real estate. I think that this is like you said, good news. I think that. It's just good that we have inflation curbed and cooling. Um, that was the whole purpose of this whole thing, you know, jacking up rates. And everybody thought, you know, they slammed on rates way too hard. They raised them way mm-hmm. too fast and everything's going to crash. Prices are going to crash. Everything is, you know, kind of just falling into balance. Like they're easing off the brakes. Mm-hmm. Rates are coming down. Prices trended down a little bit, but there was no crash. And, you know, I don't have a crystal ball there maybe something that happens a day from now that I could never predict and that maybe there is a crash. I'm not going to say that there's never going to be a crash, uh, but I don't foresee that given, uh, you know, the direction Jay Powell's taking us. Mm -hmm. We're we're easing down. Things are going to level out, and and it's what's best for the long term. Where we were at was not sustainable. We've talked on that. We don't really need to hark on it anymore. Yeah, I think the main thing to pay attention to is unemployment. The main thing that we need to watch for from the perspective of housing, potential housing issues, is unemployment. Uh, I think you will see companies laying more people off, uh, which is sad but true. I think we might see more of that. From an interest rate perspective, though, there is very strong data and evidence that shows that we should be in the mid-5% into 2023, into the middle of 2023. Now, right now, we're at six, just over 6%, 6.07%. Okay, So interest rates have gone down for mortgages. Um, one thing that you need to pay attention to, and if you're listening to anybody talking about interest rates and what's going to happen with them, what determines interest rates is where the 10-year treasury yield is. And I don't want to, I don't want to bore people with numbers, but pay attention to the 10-year treasury. The biggest thing, though, is historically the spread between interest rates, mortgage rates, and the 10-year. The spread between that is usually one 
175 basis points and 200 basis points. Simply put, it's about 1.1 and three quarters percent to 2%. So right now, the 10 year treasury is at three, let's just say three and a half, okay, 3.5. And interest rates are just over six. So what this is saying, the current spread between the 10 year and rates is over two and a half. But historically, the spread is between 175 and two. So what this means, simply put, and I don't want to bore you with economic stuff, but what this means is that there's more room for them to lower mortgage rates if needed to be. Okay, the reason that they're higher is to slow down the rapid increase of prices. They keep them a little higher right now to slow down the rapid increase of prices. But with CPI coming down, that's good. Those are good news, good reports. But keeping the rates higher is slowing the real estate markets down so people aren't overspending and overvaluing prices. So there's still room for that to come down. If jobs start to go and recession fear continues to grow and we do go into a recession, there's room for them to close that gap of, of the spread and lower interest rates to get people spending again, simply put. So what does this mean? If things get bad in the economy, there's room roughly a half to three quarters of a percent to where they can lower that spread and lower rates and get people spending on homes and mortgages again. In my opinion, I made a video about this not too long ago, this is a very, very, very good time to buy a house. A very good time to buy a house because when rates go back down, right? We're talking, how many people we talk to every day who say they wanna wait to see what happens with rates, they're concerned, right? There's an old quote by Warren Buffett, when people are, are greedy, be fearful. But when people are fearful, you should be greedy. And right now, there's a lot of people who are very feel, fearful. And if someone is overpricing their property, it's a good time to be greedy to try to get a good deal on that. Totally. And we're seeing a lot of really good deals happen. And when interest rates go back down, there's going to be more people who get into the market. And it's going to be harder to be that greedy because less people will be fearful. Yeah, totally. And, and what do you think is going to happen with prices when rates go down? You know, and more Correct. people get into the market. They're going to go up. It's it's very basic supply and demand. And, yes. you know, Really, the, the advice I'm giving everybody and I give to anybody that's watching this is don't try and time the market because you'll probably lose. You know, just look at your s circumstance, look at your situation. And if it's the right time to buy, you know, if you're expecting a kid, you need more space, buy. Your kid moves out, you need less space, sell. Buy a smaller house, you know, just mm -hmm. live your life. You know, don't try and time the market. Um, it'll all work out. And there's ways in negotiating for you to get seller concessions to buy down your interest rate. That's something that we are doing all the time right now. Highly recommend it. So uh, last thing, last conversation is we both just found this out. Okay. But we, I personally am a huge UFC fan. Um, and at my house, every UFC fight, we're always watching the fights. We always got people over. I love, I love it. Um, so for a couple of years now, I've watched almost every single fight. And uh, we just found that so Stefan Bonner passed away at 45 years old. But Stefan Bonner, who is a UFC legend, his fight with him and Forrest Griffin was arguably what pushed it the sport. Changed and the whole trajectory. elevated the sport yeah. uh, entirely. Stefan Bonner is from Northwest Indiana, yeah, which we didn't worry about that. Uh, Northwest Indiana native and mixed martial arts legend Stefan Bonner died at age 45, unfortunately. Um, he's born at St. Margaret's in downtown Hammond, raised in Munster, graduate of Munster High School and Purdue University, where he started, studied sports medicine. Um, Bonner died from presumed heart complications while at work, it says. Um, one of the most impactful, yeah, one of the most important figures in UFC history. That fight with him and Forrest Gif Griffin literally changed the sport forever. We had no idea that he was from the region. I had no idea. And That's I insane. grew up, you know, I've been wrestling my whole life. I've yeah. been around martial arts combat sports my whole life i did not know so yeah. rest in peace yeah r.i.p sucks to see somebody go that soon and and even if he lived a long life he was, just seemed like such a great dude and such a good like you said change the whole trajectory of the sport um legend heart goes out prayers go out to his friends and family for sure thank you guys for watching 25th episode noah's full time happy new year welcome 2023 thank you for watching we'll see you later